Hello, welcome to my animated theory video series. Today I'll be talking about new historicism and some of its major points. Now, please keep in mind that in order to really understand new historicism, we have to have a general idea of what was the traditional historicism and how new historicism is different from that and keeping that in mind is important. Now, some of the historical background of new historicism. It was developed in 1970s in response to perceived excesses of new criticism, which tended to ignore importance of historical context of the work of art. So remember, new critics mostly focused on the text and not on historical context. Now, some of its major assumptions that apply are as with traditional historicism, new historicism argues that we cannot know texts separate from their historical context. Unlike traditional historicists, new historicists insist that all interpretation is subjectively filtered through one's own set of historically conditioned viewpoints. There is no objective history. From Foucault, history is an intersection of discourses that establish an episteme, a dominant ideology. Texts sometimes reveal a resistance to the episteme rather than reflect it. The real center of inquiry is not the text, but history. Each text is only one example of many types of discourses that reveal history. To best understand a text, one should look at all sorts of other texts of the time, including social practice, as a kind of text. So what we are learning is there is almost a total reversal from new critics. Instead of just taking the text as a point of arrival of all meaning, what the new historicists are saying is that not only do we need to look at particular history of a text when it was produced to know it, Right? But also within that history, not just focus on larger historical narratives, but even the minor discourses that might underwrite a text. And that's a crucial thing to keep in mind. Now, going over to its methodology, right? similar to traditional historicism, except that it looks to a greater variety of discourses, social, political, religious, artistic, to help explain the text. New historicists investigate it in that way, and they might also incorporate the life of the author or the social rules found within the text, the manner in which the text reveals their historical situations, the ways in which other historical texts can help us understand the text. So pretty much, a focus is on history, but on particular histories of texts themselves or the textual conditions within which they were produced. And do keep in mind that Foucault's idea of discourse and episteme are crucial to development of new historicism. And that's what a lot of people rely on. And Foucault was at Berkeley when new historicism becomes big in the 1970s. And Another main concern there is that history is not unmotivated, it's not natural, right? It's discursively produced and that's important to keep in mind. Now, some of the criticisms, since the true center of analysis is history, new historical critics sometimes don't play close attention to the actual text. Some historians, as opposed to English professors, criticize the limited sampling of texts used to explain or elucidate the text. Some new historicists, for example, can be accused of hasty generalizations. So as you can see, criticism is coming from two poles, from literary scholars who may be connected to new criticism and must believe that the text itself has a certain integrity and not the history around it. And then historians who obviously are saying, well, you guys are using history, but you're not using it as we historians do. And sometimes you can find a small little thing in a text of history and you overgeneralize it. And that criticism also comes from English scholars for new historicists because they are so bent on retrieving the silenced narratives, as Foucault would say, or the Bruce knowledge is, is that sometimes they take something and end up expanding its expense and its power 
too generally or in too broad terms. And so these two criticisms are mobilized still from literary scholars as well as from the historians in this approach. Now, traditional historicism, when done by excellent historicists, has a deeper understanding of the historical determinants of meaning in a text. Knowing the implied text that permeates a text helps us understand it more fully. New historicism, in addition to what the historicists do, we gain a better understanding of how historical viewpoints are complicated and how they are filtered through our own epistemes. So what enters the historical scholarship in new historicism is a genealogy of our own positioning, our subjectivity, and how knowing that we are discursively produced is important. Here is the resource from where pretty much most of this information has come, and they'll be linked to it in the description, and I'm grateful to them. As always, thank you so much for watching. And as always, from me to you, peace and love.